G'day guys, welcome to Spacey's Arcade. Today we're going to look at the aim track and what's wrong with it. But first of all, I think we should just get straight and have a game. See for ourselves, and let's have a little bit of a chat about this guy. Alright, some zero point guys. Zero points, very, very good in terms of it's a very similar game to Point Blank, but uh, but different, different little mini games. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> Started speeding up on me guys. So look, I think you can see straight away A, nice recoil. But B, you know, when I started taking just some pot shots um, and started aiming and just doing them one at a time, you can see I can actually get the accuracy down very, very well. Oh shit, what am I doing? I'm after these guys, am I? Yeah, oh no. Anything but those guys? What am I doing? Oh shit, none of these. Which one? Oh no, I'm supposed to be going for the one that's the saying. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, but slowly in it, guys. <laughs> I find this game really, really hard. I do like it, but it is very hard. And guys, you know, I sort of pulled this, this out of the closet, actually. Um, and it's one of those things with light gun games, I think, is... I'm not sure what was happening there actually, I was shooting off the screen. Um, it's one of those things you like you really wanna you really wanna get it. I'm have to read that one. Shit, hang on. You really wanna play light gun games and like right now I'm really enjoying it. But it's one of those one of those types of things that you play sometimes, but not all the time. So you tend to sort of put the guns down and they get, you know put aside unless they're really accessible then you know well for me anyway I haven't tended to use them a lot and so it was cool to get these back out again and check everything out and I thought I'd do a video on it because you know everyone talks about the Sindon light guns and they look really awesome I've had these well before the, the Sindons came out and I just wanted to see really whoops Oh, we're going after the, these guys. Crap, I didn't, I didn't, it's a TNT, right? Yeah. Um, I just, yeah, I wanted to see again how good or bad the aim tracks are. Um, because, you know, a lot of people online go on about them bang on. They're not accurate or, you know, if you move around, you know, you lose accuracy and stuff. But I honestly haven't found that. I can even like if I sit down and shoot, I can pretty much get the same sort of accuracy. Um, I mean, it does move a little, but it's one of those things like it's you know unless you're doing sharp shooting, then yeah, you might want pinpoint accuracy. But for everything else, I mean, I'm not even using a. <laughs> okay, a bit. Of, let's see if I can aim here. Uh, I'm not even using a um, sight on the screen. So what you do, what you do get used to is that you see where your other bullet goes and you do tend to adjust your gun, I will say that. But I think you'd do that even on a real light gun game. Um, and without the pointer on the screen, you don't see some of the lag of the, of the pointer, which, you know, all these guns tend to have. And I think even the Sindon has a bit of a lag, you know, from one side of the screen to the other, right? Um, so you know they're not all perfect solutions but look we'll talk about that a little bit more later so so what I like, so yeah i'm way off there i must admit so i was slightly off to the off to the left so yeah so it's not a perfect solution by any means but i find that generally for just having fun it's good enough you know it's like um 
Okay, gotta get these guys. It's good enough to have fun with, and it's not bad enough to... It's not bad enough to, to go, oh, you know, I need some, I need, I need to get the in, I need to get something else. Um, and so that's really the purpose of this video is to sort of show, well, what is, what is wrong with it and in terms of what is wrong with it, you're not going to get perfect accuracy. And even then you can see it slightly went off. But there's a lot of good, really good points about this gun. Feels really nice. It's got, um, oh shoot, I hate this particular one. I don't know which one, you only have one bullet and you've got to say which one it is. I didn't even watch it. Is it that one? Uh, I, yeah, so there you go. One shot guys and I missed it. <laughs> so, so yeah, look, it's a nice gun. It feels nice. It's like a Namco style gun um, with the two buttons on either side. Some people have complained that, you know, it has two wires coming out of the, the bottom uh, for the solenoid. But in fact, it is one wire. It's all just nicely bound up. If you didn't know, you wouldn't know actually. It's a slight little knobble along the way here because I think that's where they've got some cable ties wrapping them up inside. But yes, yeah, a single cable, guys. Um, the other thing with this particular gun with the aim tracks is the sensor bar at the top. Let me see if I can get some of these. Yes, the sensor bar up the top, guys, is um, the extreme version. The one that comes with this kit, just chuck it in the bin. It's hopeless. It's really, really bad. I struggled with it. I remember when I first got this years ago. And uh, yeah, it, it's that sensor bar made all the difference. It got rid of all the, the, the problems in setting it up. And when I say set up, this has got very minimal set up. And I'll show you the... It's like a little Galagos stage. I like this. I like this a lot. I haven't, I haven't played this uh, little mini game before. <sighs> wow. I was supposed to get 25. Oh, I managed to get it, guys. See, there's my Galaga seals coming out. Um, yeah, so it's also got this, there's a feature that if you shoot off screen, it's not going to, you can hear it triggering there, but it's not selecting anything. Um, and it's not it's not hitting the solenoid, so uh, the solenoid only goes off when you're at the screen. There's no background software running. There's a configuration software, which I'll get into after. But there's no need to run any software in the back end or do any other configuration. You know, once it's uh, initially uh, set up and calibrated good to go guys and even to the point where this was sitting down for I look up I'd be perfectly honest probably over a year a year and a half and when I pulled it out and it was in the same position that I had it calibrated originally it's still exactly the same as it was so you know <laughs> so yeah it, it's um it does hold its calibration as well but then it's really easy to recalibrate you just need to, which, which guys am I getting these ones? Oh, it's just like that little alligator, alligators. Um, you just need to hold down the trigger when you're not in a game, and then you can actually uh, quickly recalibrate. And you know, that, that takes a couple of seconds. So even if you had someone else playing and they were at a completely different height, but as I said, I don't think that makes much of a difference. Uh, you could recalibrate pretty quickly. No background software. So from that perspective, you know, no white border. Um, works pretty damn good, guys. <laughs> one, one more game, and then I'll show you show you some of the settings. I'll go for that top one there, top left. <laughs> and let's just do some... Okay, so I don't want the, the blue ones. I'm just going to go for the red. I'm, just, I'm not going to spray my bullets. I'm going to try and actually, he says, this is actually quite hard. And the other thing is, in terms of accuracy guys, it's not like you'll get it completely accurate anyway in terms of how good you are. You've got to, you've got to take that into account, right? If you're not very good, 
then you're not going to make the shots. That was actually that was actually pretty hard. Let's see if I do better on the office. It's like some Santa claw. Oh no, some witches. Shoot the witches. All right, I think these ones move pretty quick, so I might have to shoot fairly rapidly. And like guys, when you do shoot rapidly, it's a good good example. I mean, you can. You can get it pretty good. I mean, I guess the thing is, is once you've shot in the right place when they're following on behind, it's not that difficult, right? Even if the accuracy was off. But you can see I'm sort of getting in there pretty, pretty, pretty okay. And as I said, like, you can't be perfect on the gun because then why would you be playing the game? So, all right. So guys, look, that's this game. We're going to play a few more games after this, but what I'm going to do, just to show you, because this is running in MAME at the moment, easy to set up in MAME too. I'm going to show you it playing a, a PlayStation game, and also we'll go into um, Techno Parrot, play some modern releases, and show that this gun worked perfectly across those. I would show you the PlayStation 2 as well, but I can't, because I've got a problem with the emulator itself. Nothing to do with the gun. So I need to sort that out and get that running another time. We can look at some PS2 games as well. Um, <laughs> and hey, just holding this up and pushing this around is giving me a bit of a workout. I can feel it. <laughs> so let's have a look at the settings. Uh, as I said, there's no actual real settings to the gun except for this initial calibration. Um, and sorry, I mean, there is settings that you can apply. But once you apply them, you apply them and that's it. You don't have to run that software again. Let's take a look. So guys, I'll show you my setup here in uh, AimTrack version 2.0, you can see, which is the latest one I've downloaded off the net and um, off the Ultimark website. Now, the thing is, is that this program wouldn't run for me initially, and it's a bit finicky with other USB devices plugged in. Not all USB devices, but some. I had to unplug my HP VR headset and then it fires up. Otherwise you click on it and it just like nothing happens. So if you have that problem, check your USB ports for some offending device. So in the settings here, it's pretty basic. It comes up with the configuration here. You've got this tilt Z correction thing and I've got it on intelligent um, setting at the moment and again this stuff is explained pretty well in the manual that comes with the aim track you can download off the web so I won't go through all the detail there but that's the setting that I have uh, for when the gun is being tilted seems to provide the best sort of response uh, for me the recoil in the gun itself and you can see it's got a little test so you can just test it to see the strength of it and you can see that you know right here I've got it down on the fourth setting and that is plenty strong enough Remember, these guns do come with an extra power pack to uh, drive, I think it's like 24 to 30 odd volts. And, uh, you know, and that's typical of like a pimple machine solenoid. So you can imagine when you crank that thing up, it's like really powerful. So nice thing is you can just go in here and turn, you know, turn it up and down. Uh, or of course, you could just unplug the power, which is separate on the device and not have the recoil at all. And the IR gain, uh, you can have auto gain, but that's for the, the infrared uh, receiver. And I've got it set at four. And again, that may be different for you. Play around with it to, uh, to get the setting. And um, that's about it for the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have the button assignments. Now, it's extremely important to set this up correctly because some of the emulators just won't work. Um, without having this as an emulated mouse and then using mouse buttons because you can in here actually select other buttons and I did have this set initially having just normal general buttons here but things like uh, Techno Parrot when you go into it it will detect the gun but it doesn't won't detect those um, those additional buttons for some reason it just doesn't see it so I have to put it back to the mouse. Now I also started off with the mouse being middle um, and then left to just sort of light it up with the mouse middle being trig and then mouse left and mouse right seemed to be the logical way. But again, in uh, the PlayStation emulator, it defaults and you can't change it uh, when you're selecting it to be the mouse um, left button as being the trigger. So anyway, guys, I've gone through all that, and now I seem to have a setup that's working perfectly with 
the emulators that I've tried. So I would suggest you use those settings if you have an aim track. Now down the bottom here, you've got the devices. Again, I'm not going to go through all of this because you can look at this in the manual. I just wanted to point out a few things that I learned along the way. But I've got device 8 and 7 is the two guns that I have. And everything else on here will be no device, as it says on the bottom there. Um, and as I said, you can calibrate from here, but other, otherwise you can say, well, how do you enable the calibration? I've got it currently set as just my main trigger and the calibration delay is being five seconds. So look, you could change that to 10 or 20 or whatever to make sure, like if you're in a, a machine gun type game and you're holding down the button, you don't want to do like five seconds of holding down and then going into calibration. So I haven't really come across that problem yet, but um, if I did, it'd be quite easy for me to just switch this to even the left and right button, hold that down for like 30 seconds on the right of the gun. Um, it's up to you, but at least it's configurable and it makes it really easy when you wanna just quickly uh, calibrate. So look, that's pretty much it. There's a sense of view check and you can read up about that and you can pretty much just um, point the gun at the screen and it will show you, let's do that now, and we'll show you whereabouts it can see it. And if it's red, then it's the IR is really good. And it looks jerky on this uh, sensor check view, but it's not on the screen. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty smooth. But again, in the game, it's, it's very smooth. So don't take too much notice of the, the smoothness. But if it's orange here, then that's when you want to look, put up your sensor uh, settings in that first tab. But you can see it's all nice and red, so we're all good. In the setup tab, uh, you've got the ability to change those IDs for your different guns. And you can have up to four guns, I believe, and you can also upgrade your firmware in here. And then there's a raw data. It just shows you the raw data. I think if I move this around, yep, you can see that it's showing the raw, gut, raw data of the gun. So if you needed to send that in for any diagnosis or anything. But again, guys, it's, it's worked out of the box. And, um, you know, once I've got that all, all configured, it's, uh, it works very, very well. All right, so that's all. And then once you've done that, guys, literally, this is a, you know, this is a close and forget. You don't need it anymore. Now, if we quickly look at MAME, have a look at zero point in here. And you can see that um, we get into this game's controls. You can see that uh, as soon as you go in there and you click on the player one for the gun, it actually comes up with the gun. It recognizes it as a gun. Uh, same with the, uh, the left and right. You just click on the left and then move the gun on the X and move the gun left and right. And then uh, click on the Y analog and move the gun up and down. It will detect it straight off, guys. And then you can set up your buttons as well. So really easy and MAME to do. And it shows that it's a gun, so it's not a mouse in here or anything. Although obviously it acts a bit like a mouse. In EPSXE, you actually need to find and download this particular plugin, uh, Nuvi. And then once you have that available, open up ESPSXE. Um, if I go to game pads and port one and pad, you can see here that I've got the uh, controller types set up with gun con. And if I, I haven't set this up for two players, but um, you just choose your gun con here and then you can do the config, go through the on-screen instructions to register the gun and then you're good to go. And finally, in Techno Parrot, guys, just in terms of the quick uh, look at the settings, if I look at the controller setup in here, you can see that it picks up, uh, you just select the gun that you want. It's going to show everything else that's in there. Um, we've got all these set up already. And then, you know, you can select your right button, left button and so forth, just clicking on here and then clicking your gun. And it will register. And as I said, as long as you've got all your mouse buttons set up in that previous config, then it will see the buttons perfectly. And then that's all you need to do. That's the settings there, and then it fires up. So guys, with that said, let's uh, go have a look at a few other games. Let's have a little bit of a play. Okay guys, we've got some time crisis to 
have a look at on the EPSXE emulator. So, and you notice I've actually got a couple of cursors too at the moment. Um, which I need to look into. So at the moment you're going to see these cursors here. It's Rachel, the daughter. Um, but you know that's cool in a way because you can sort of see where I'm aiming, see how it responds. Okay, time crisis, guys. The original. And let's get into some time crisis. This is such a great, great game dynamic, guys, eh? When it first came out, it was like so cool. Whoa. It was a little to his left. Happy that's me, though. <laughs> that's the problem. Almost found myself ducking down there a little. Such a great game. Such a classic. <laughs> I guess I'm moving my body, guys. I feel like I am a little to the left there. Let's see if I can get in the sights and see. Mm, it seems to be pretty much there in the where the arrow where the uh, arrows are, the mouse uh, arrows are. Yeah, hang on. Let's. Get... Yeah, it's a little, little bit off when it's when it's when it's in the distance, I must say. But if you if you're spraying, then you should be able to hit the shot even if it's far away. And the, and the triggers on these are, are really nice, guys. Like the, it 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 flows really really nicely. Wow, okay, bit rusty, but such a good game. All right, let's uh, take a look at another one. We'll head just into Techno Parrot just for a, just showing another emulator. And let's take a look at uh, Seagin Golden Gun. Yeah. All right, guys, this isn't, a, this isn't a game that I'm that familiar with at all. Um, but it looks pretty cool. And of course, look, look this has got the the sight here and you can see sort of how quickly this moves across like there is a slight delay there but it's pretty quick pretty quick okay Very cool. Cool graphics. What's going on? Come on, guys, where are you? Pretty easy get to that guy. Frantic guys, gun go. Absolutely frantic. You gotta have them in your arcade. That's for sure. Nice. Cool dragons. Oh, 
so a little thing down there I could have got on the left. I think that was a little uh, chest. Whew. There we go. guys and we are out and that's the thing two player on all of these remember no solenoid when you're firing off screen but yeah two player setup guys for playing the two player games as well I don't know uh, you decide from what you've just seen and I mean all I can say to you is that this works really well you know maybe if you're you know you've got an arcade cabinet um, maybe it won't work as well but I, I've tried this fairly close to the screen this is a fairly big screen obviously and it works fine I haven't actually put it in an arcade cabinet so I haven't can't test that use case but for this sort of distance and this sort of screen guys this is this is fantastic I enjoy it so much now would I buy this over the Sindon if I had the you know if I had the opportunity to buy again because obviously this came out before and I don't know guys I actually don't know now I mean if I had hands-on with both you know I think from everything I've read the Sindon is more accurate um, and has those benefits I just don't know about the uh, white border guys just for me personally I know some people just go you, 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 you know you forget about it but just for me it's it's just something that would probably irk me um, everything else the software running in the background I don't particularly like having other software running there's just extra challenges with that I think the software on the Sindon's got a lot better than what it was there was a lot of configuration to do whereas with this guys you know it's just you literally can plug this thing in and just go. Although you do have to make those configuration changes with the buttons, otherwise the buttons won't work properly across multiple emulators. But once you've set that, it's done, right? You don't have to do anything more. So, yeah, I don't know, guys. Um, I think it's one of those those things also that if you go from one of these to a CRT and a real light gun, probably come back to this, you'd be like, ah, it's like laggy or slow. Uh, it's one of those things because you know you're on a CRT it's just instant and I know that and I've you know I had a time crisis too way back I've got some footage of that um, and you know it's, it's just instantaneous there's no delay at all so guys what I might do just to sort of really round this off is I'm going to do another episode um, at some stage and what we'll do is I've got a PlayStation down the bottom here we can use the Namco gun on that on the CRT and I can run point blank on both, I can run point blank on the PlayStation, run point blank through EPSXE on here with this. Up and down guys, we can see both and we can make a comparison. I can go from one, pick up the gun, go to the other and really get a feel for what the difference is. But ultimately, if, you know, if you're not playing light guns on CRTs and you're just playing with one of these, um, a gun for IR, that's you know, it's a homemade sort of version. We can buy them assembled, pretty pretty expensive though. With the four IR uh, points around it, and people have raved a lot about those. I think all the solutions are pretty good, guys. That's the thing. Is um, if you've got some of these aim tracks, you know, check your configuration out. Make sure you're right. Make sure you get the extreme bar, and then play some light gun games, guys, and <laughs> enjoy it because. As I said, this might actually get me get me to start working out again. I do a little bit of this, I start warming up, might go for a walk. <laughs> we'll see, guys. All right, well, look, we'll leave it there. I'm um, interested in your comments and your thoughts. This isn't a video to go one's better than the other guys. Um, I think they all have some strengths and weaknesses, but, you know, it's good to share your thoughts and so others can see what your experiences are. You've just seen mine. We'll visit some more light gun games in the future. And if you've got any that you want me to play, we'll do a bit of a spacey's experience with them. Let me know and I'll put it in the lineup. All right guys, that's it for today. Until next time, ciao for now.